Hey, I'm Mary. And I'm Stephanie. And you're listening to The Fly Angle, the official RDU Airport podcast. Welcome to another episode of The Fly Angle. This time, I have a special guest with me. You might remember her, my colleague and director of media relations here at RDU, Stephanie Hocko. Hi, Steph. Hi, good to be here, sitting in for Jake while he's off in a tropical locale. Oh yeah, Jake's jet setting, like big time, big <laughs> yes, time. He is. We will get back with him about that, but I'm so glad that you could join us. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Did you get a chance to check out our interview with James Carter? I did. I love the podcast. Yes, oh, thank James you for is one of the most interesting people at the airport. He has an interesting job, but he also has such a varied background. So I always enjoy listening to him talk about RDU and where we're going and what he's doing. Right, it's so dynamic, mm-hmm. and he's just calm, but also visionary and practical yes. so everyone around the airport has been talking about that interview so I've got a kick out of that <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed it we hope you enjoyed it as well and we've got another interview coming today Mike Schoenfeld right stuff that's right he is so interesting he's the chief communications officer at Duke he's also an av geek self-described mm-hmm. but he is a huge advocate for RDU he sat on the triangle takeoff coalition he chaired the regional transportation alliance and so he just has so many interesting thoughts about the airport he told us he's been flying in and out of here for 40 years so he's th- seen a lot of changes at RDU definitely an interview you want to stick around for mm-hmm. so Steph we've got an airmail question and Jake usually handles our airmail question so I'm going to give it my best attempt <laughs> our airmail question this episode comes from George C George says Air Force One has made a number of visits to RDU over the years can you please tell us about what special preparations are required when welcoming the presidential aircraft that's a fun question that is a good question and pretty it's cool. uh, a lot of things go into that as yeah you know. <laughs> and we can relate to it which is pretty cool yeah, you know we've RDU been through it a couple of times here. exactly we've had the pleasure of welcoming both Air Force One and Air Force Two to the airport during the tenure of our team mm-hmm. our small community Yep, the last couple of years. Yeah. And the most recent one came when Vice President Harris visited on Air Force Two, which was just back in March, just a few months ago. Yeah. And actually, before she became the VP, she came here on a private jet. She flew through our general aviation. And so we totally snuck over there. And so (laughs) she's definitely elevated, literally and figuratively, from that private jet to Air Force Two. That's right. That's right. (laughs) Both are a great way to travel, though, I'm sure. Yes. And speaking of those preparations and the overall travel, Stephanie and I were so fortunate enough, we'll probably chalk it up to our boss, Crystal, who, yes. who made it happen. But <laughs> we got to see the C-17 that accompanies presidential visits. And it was so very cool. It was unbelievable. First of all, the thing is massive. massive. It's what goes along with Air Force One, Air Force Two. They put the limousines in there. They can put helicopters in there. It is enormous. You just walk in and look around and feel very tiny when you're standing yes. inside it. Yes. And it's just, it's mind blowing, but such a sight to see. And Definitely. the distances they can travel without stopping are unreal. And you're really involved in a lot of the preparations, particularly with media Mm -hmm. and logistics. Can you talk about what George asked in terms of what happens prior? Sure. So there's a lot of coordination, as you can imagine, with law enforcement. Of course, we work with multiple agencies. The Secret Service will come in. We work with uh, local and state agencies. Of course, our RDU Police Department. We have White House or campaign press offices that are involved. And then, you know, it all happens and goes smoothly. And it's been a lot of work, but you're really happy to, to see it all roll the way it was supposed to. (laughs) Exactly. It makes for a long day, but it's kind of cool. I feel like Secret Service rolling in is really, really cool. That is cool. And the dogs and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. You and I are always trying to pet the service dogs, right? We're not supposed to do that. We love the service dogs. (laughs) You're not supposed to approach the Secret Service dogs. Exactly. Yeah, we do. Let them do their job. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Great question, George. We're glad to kind of revisit those fun memories. Thank you for that. Let's jump into headlines, Stephanie. RDU's signature flight to Paris returns, yes, you heard it right, on August 1st, after a hiatus of more than two years. The Delta route was put on hold in March of 2020. I know we've been talking about this for a very long time. We've been talking about it because we're looking forward to it so much. This is huge news for international travelers, people who want to visit Paris, people who want to do business there, and connect to other destinations around the world. You know, you can go all over the globe from Paris. And, you know, one thing that was interesting to me that I, I did not know until I started working here is what a big business route that is. I always think of it being kind of a vacation leisure destination. Right. And you know, with Paris returning, we now have six nonstop flights, the most we've ever had at RDU, which is pretty amazing That's coming out of the pandemic when there was no international traffic. Yes, so six. Uh, now with Paris, we have London, Reykjavik, Cancun, Toronto, and Montreal. Those are our international destinations. And boy, are we happy to see yes, those we are. come back. Yes, we know you are as well. <laughs> we get those inquiries quite regularly. Yes. <laughs> 
I know you were telling me some interesting things. I'd love for you to share those with our listeners. Okay, fun facts. From RDU to CDG, which is the airport in Paris, 4,052 miles one way. Wow. Takes a while, too. It is a uh, eight-hour flight if you take it eastbound. It's nine hours and 50 minutes when you're taking it westbound, and they're going to fly that on a 205 c 767 300 Wow. That's a big plane, too. Yes, it is. So glad. That's just Got a short a trip over the pond <laughs> for a lot of people. That's right. We're really happy to welcome that flight back for sure. Also, those Paris-bound guests, along with all of our other airport visitors, will have the opportunity to check out our new virtual food hall that opened in July in Terminal 2. This was one of the most fun events I think we've had at RDU, was the opening of the Ghost Kitchen. Agreed. Uh, we actually have, uh, it's called Get Reef. It's a virtual food hall, and they have one kitchen, but they have menus from nine different restaurants. So they're cooking from all of these different brands, and you know, you go to the airport, maybe you're with your family, everybody wants to eat something different, mm -hmm. right? Every kid wants something different. <laughs> want something different so you can order from the nine different concepts there and i'll list them off for you they are crispy rice 800 degrees pizza payway zochimex cantina grill zin burger rebel wings and then some local concepts which are bu cafe hub kitchen and american meltdown Awesome. And the food was good. The food is really and good. And BU coffee was so good. <laughs> <laughs> we went over and, you know, tested it out just yeah, to make sure. Yeah, a couple sure. times. <laughs> yeah, you know, just got to be sure. So airport guests can come in. They can mix and match all of those menu items. And it's actually really interesting because you pay either on your phone, you have a QR code, or you can pay at a kiosk mm -hmm. if you want to. You order, you pay. It's seamless. It's one experience. And then you get a code on your phone. They, they tell you what locker to go to punch in your code, open it up, there's your food. Just that quick. Yeah, it's, it's so amazing. Simple. Yes, I love it. Well, with more than a million people traveling through RDU last month, we're glad to give them more options, right? <laughs> we sure are. 1.1 million passengers flew through the airport in June. I love writing our press releases every month lately because it's a record every single month. Right, right. <laughs> so this is the third month in a row that we've topped our traffic since pandemic total. This is really exciting for us. So mm -hmm. we're up 24% now over June of last year. It's our most recent data. And and then we're back at 83% compared to 2019 levels in terms of passenger traffic, considering we were down to 4% at right. one point. Right. And that's a common <laughs> that's a question recovery. that I think a lot of people wonder, are you back? Are you all the way back? Right. And we're just about back, which we're is close to back. It's we're we're closing in on, on being back to 2019. And when you go in the terminals, boy, it sure looks like it's it back. does. <laughs> it, it truly does. It's such an exciting time to be at the airport. Yeah, so we are fully back in growth mode. Yes, definitely. And I'm super passionate about this a new program that our you just kicked off in July. It's going to help people with hidden disabilities who may need assistance or extra time when they travel. And you did a great job bringing this in, Mary. You so excited. This. Yeah, so I love excited. your enthusiasm about this. And I, I am too now that I, I know about it. So we are partnering with the Hidden Disability Sunflower Organization to distribute sunflower branded products. And that could be a lanyard, a bracelet, um, you know, a pin, mm -hmm. all kinds of different things. And what they do is just discreetly indicate that the wearer might need a little more extra assistance a little more time when they're going through the airport. And I didn't know this either, but the sunflower is a globally recognized symbol for non-visible disabilities, which are also called hidden or invisible disabilities. It's just a great opportunity to offer that world-class service that we always talk about. And just to be kind, you know, when we were at right. the press conference, it was just a general sense of, our efforts to help other people and to make people feel welcomed. And, and it's so easy just to get in the buzz of the airport. We're all a little discombobulated sometimes. Right. So just to add an extra layer of sensitivity in a discreet manner is just so awesome. I'm so glad that we're doing this I at the airport. I am too. And it, you know, it really, it helps us create an inclusive environment and give that, that guest experience that we want all of our customers to have. And if you haven't heard that term before, hidden disabilities, this is not something I had been familiar with until you brought the program to us here. This could be anything from dementia to autism, learning difficulties, physical and mental health conditions, and mobility or speech impairments, really anything that impacts your day-to-day -day life. And, you know, people who have these challenges can come through an airport and they can be very confused. It mm -hmm. can be a very kind of intimidating experience for them. And so they can choose to wear the lanyard, the bracelet, the pin. All of us who are trained in the program also wear a lanyard mm -hmm. or a pin. And that indicates to them that we are trained to assist them. And we can just help them get through the airport smoothly 
smoothly, you know, navigate that experience. And you can actually go to our information desks and pick up those products. If you're traveling with someone who needs them, you can call us ahead of time. We'll let you come pick them up. So really just a great program to make sure that everybody has a good experience here at the airport. And increasing that accessibility is so Mm -hmm. critical. Make sure you visit our website at rdu.com. You can click on our traveling with the disabilities page to see the wide array of services that the airport offers visitors to make that a seamless experience and of course offer support where we're able to so rdu.com look that up and definitely learn more about the program yeah we're really happy to be offering that and you know i I think there's a whole community out there of of parents and people who are traveling with someone who may need a little extra assistance who are going to be really glad to see that we have this here good stuff Mr. Mike Schoenfeld is wrapping up more than a decade as Chief Communications Officer at Duke University. He's a leader, an aviation enthusiast, and an RDU supporter. He served as Chair of the Regional Transportation Alliance, or a good partner, RTA, and pushed for the organization to increase their focus on the value of air travel. Please welcome to the podcast a well-respected RDU champion, Mr. Mike Schoenfeld. Hey, Mike. Great. Thank you, Mary. Great to see you, Steph. Good to have you here. We're so glad that you could join us. Can you talk a little bit about your background and your work at Duke over the last 14 years? Oh, sure. How much time do you have? Um, (laughs) As much as you want. I'm wrapping up serving as Duke's Vice President for Public Affairs and Government Relations and Chief Communications Officer, something I've been doing since 2008. In that role, I have been essentially the Chief Spokesperson for Duke, the Chief Ambassador, the Overseer of the University's reputation and brand. Uh, media relations, government relations, overseeing our office in Washington, um, and did a lot of work with uh, our international programs as well. So community, campus, uh, national, global. I will often say and will always say I had the best job on campus because I had a license to be involved in everything. No matter where it happened, if it said Duke on it, I was responsible for it. And that was fun. Wow, absolutely that's major. <laughs> you mentioned Duke's global presence. I wanted to ask you about that. You know, you mm-hmm. all have campuses around the world. You have a large population of international students. You have alumni around the world. So how does the airport function to keep all of those people and places connected? Great question. Duke is a global institution of the highest order. So we have 7,000 undergraduates, maybe 10%, 10 to 15% of those are international students. They come from all over the world. We have about 10,000 graduate and professional students, probably 25% of those are international. We have a university that has been developed over the last 14 years in Kunshan, China, outside of Shanghai. We have a medical school in Singapore. We have programs, people, research, offices, activities, probably at any given time in about 75 different countries. Then add to that, we have patients coming in, we have visitors coming to the campus, we have performances, we have programs. So we're probably, I I can't quantify it, I can't, can't swear by it, but we're probably one of the biggest generators. We're certainly one of the biggest generators of air traffic as an employer and as an institution. I'm going to guess we're one of the biggest generators of international air traffic as well because people come from all over the world. So why is that important? If you can't get here from there, you're not going to come here. And uh, one of the great differentiators for us, one of the great advantages for us, frankly, has been over the last... 10 years at least, has been RDU. And I hear it constantly from students, from parents, from people who come here for meetings or conferences or research that having a good airport with great service and easy to navigate is one of the things that makes a difference. And you you, know, you hear this in, in your economic development work and elsewhere. I can tell you for Duke University, maybe not quite as glamorous as some of our other economic development activities, but a major, major engine, the airport is absolutely essential. You know, to be able to, I've been very focused in my RTA time on international air service. I've worked with Mike Langeth and and others on advocating for international service. So the ability to drive to RDU and wake up in London that's, I love that. You know, they'd be able the ability to go to Paris, now Iceland. Many of us have been for many years, kind of, you know, keeping the the pedal to the metal on a on a flight to Asia. Obviously, pandemic and everything else has changed a lot, but certainly the desire is there. You know, we have to figure out how to make the demand. But RDU as an asset for Duke University, tremendous. 
So could you drill down into kind of your communications role and the intersection of that connectivity and how you've interacted with RDU over your tenure at Duke? So there's a selfish part of this. I have done a lot of traveling. I probably was, up until the pandemic, I was probably traveling, I don't know, 50,000 miles a year, 100,000 miles a year. Wow. I, don't, I don't know. I would be overseas typically three, four times a year for Duke. I was in China a couple of times a year. I have an office in Washington, so I'd be in Washington every other week. I'd say for a good part of the time at Duke, I was at the airport, maybe not every week, but certainly every other week. So very selfishly, mm-hmm. having a great airport here and an easy airport to, that you can get to on autopilot and get through, very, very important. So my role more broad from a Duke standpoint, from a communication standpoint, was representing the university in the community and beyond and advocating for those policies and activities that, that help the community, but also help the university. So That's how I got involved with RTA, and that's how I got involved with RDU. And for me, again, it's been a personal interest. Well, I'm an aviation geek, so we'll get into that later, I know. (laughs) Tune Uh, uh, tune in, aviation geeks, you heard that. (laughs) But but for the university and for the community, you know, it's... Mm-hmm. The university doesn't exist in a vacuum. The airport doesn't exist in a vacuum. We have a we have a vibrant, growing region here, and part and parcel of a vibrant, growing region is a great airport. Fourteen years is a long time, and that's a lot of travel that you just mentioned. Mm-hmm. So, if you think about that experience and how RDU has changed, you know what stands out the most to you in terms of that experience, <clears throat> and whether it's connectivity and more routes, or just in general. So, um, let me let me rewind even farther. I first came to Duke in 1980 as a freshman from New York. Okay. So wow. I flew new york air if i if i recall correctly which was one of the old airlines i think i'm into the old old terminal mm-hmm. that was torn down hey. uh, uh, <laughs> terminal, terminal a, a. Yeah, whatever what, so i've been flying in and out of rdu for 42 years in some form or another i still have that memory so rdu has in the last 10 years You know, certainly the Terminal B was the game changer. People flew into RDU and said, holy cow, this is like, you know, this is a real real airport (laughs) that is easy to navigate and easy to get around and and makes a big difference. And again, the pandemic kind of pressed the reset and and did, did a whole lot of things for people. But up until then, the airport was always seen as constantly evolving and changing, Mm -hmm. you know, and adding services. So... If you can't get here from there, you're, you're not going to come here. And that connectivity that RDU brings to the region is so valuable, it's just expected. Of course you're right. going to be able to fly from RDU to London. RDU is part of the landscape. You talked about being an aviation geek. I uh-huh. love, as we talked about earlier, being in an airport and hearing people speak different languages and that excitement of they're off on a work trip or a vacation or they're going to a destination they've never been before. Tell me how you got interested in aviation. Oh, I just like planes. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of people here. I, I, like, I, like, I like big planes. Yeah, the bigger the better. There are a few things I love more than getting, I, I know this sounds weird, than getting stuck in a large international airport where I can look out on the tarmac, see or the runway, and you can see planes from all over the world. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's an airport here in uh, in place like Heathrow or Istanbul or Shanghai, where where you just see you see the whole crossroads of the world and. I just I love I love big planes, you know. They'll they'll never be in my mind, there will never be anything as gorgeous as a seven forty seven. Um, <laughs> it's it is the queen of the skies. <laughs> and lately I've also become really interested in business aviation and business jets. Mm-hmm. So I actually can tell the difference between a Citation ten and a, you know, G five. There you go. It's a great way to travel. Which impresses my right. friends right. Um, <laughs> uh, for about 10 seconds, and then they right, think right. it's a little weird. <laughs> right. So we're all communicators here in the room, and one of the reasons we do this podcast is to educate people about RDU and build awareness in the community. Mm-hmm. What do you feel like our responsibility, our role is in doing that for the Research Triangle region? A couple of things. First, you, know, you mentioned the Research Triangle region. This is the only place in the country, maybe in the world, where research is our first name. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the research triangle, and the fact that it is one of the smartest places on the planet 
you know, Duke, UNC, NC State, NC Central, all of the colleges and universities here, the pharmaceutical industry, the National Institutes of Health, RTI, these are all global institutions. And being the airport of the research triangle seems to me to be a great opportunity to promote and illustrate and make visible kind of what we do here. And I think it's been done and and it's been done, you know, subtly and it's been done overtly. And I think we've seen the results. We're seeing some of the biggest, most innovative companies in the world setting up really important outposts here. Apple is not coming here in spite of the airport. They're coming here because of mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the airport. You know, you can go down the list. So I, so I think the, the opportunity and the responsibility for RDU is frankly, just as important as a Duke. It's just as important as a RTI. It's that place where the world comes to the triangle. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And you have people like me who didn't grow up here and they flew in and never left. Yeah, well, me too. Ditto. All of us. (laughs) That's right. Everybody here. (laughs) Our regular listeners will recall, I think it was in episode nine, we talked about the Triangle Takeoff Coalition and Mm -hmm. Duke became an early member of that coalition. And the coalition essentially is a group of businesses and organizations who like we were just talking about, recognize the value of the airport to the Triangle region. Why did you join that coalition, and what did you want the business community to know about it? Well, um, why did we join? Because it was a vital effort at a critical time in our history and a critical time for the community. And Duke, absolutely, as a major player and a major citizen of the community, we absolutely had to be involved. So that was that was fairly easy. You know, that was that was not a, a, a difficult or challenging decision. What do we want people to know? We want people to know that, A, that RDU is open for business. B, that air travel is safe. It is efficient. It is effective. You know, it's very easy to forget we were basically in the bunker for two years. The Triangle Takeoff Coalition, we came together with the realization that, you know, we kind of need to re-educate people. And we need to restart. RDU was on such a great run up until March of 2020. And it's easy to forget just how strong things were going. So, you know, there's a little bit of kind of resetting the table. It's it's okay to get back on a plane. You talked about how much you've traveled over the years with Duke. Do you feel like that personal connection is important? Because we all got used to doing things virtually over the last couple of years. How important is it to you to actually go oh, yeah, somewhere and yeah, shake a hand and yeah, see a face? Yeah. There are so many aspects of, of that personal connection. There is the, the shaking the hand, the seeing the face, the being in the room, the experiencing, building the relationships. Can you do a lot online by Zoom or by team? Sure, of course you can. We, we are fundamentally changed for the better because of it. Yeah, it mm-hmm. makes a difference. So we have these places where people come together and they come together for a reason because that place-based activity is that place-based learning, that place-based experience can't be duplicated. It can be enhanced certainly by by Zoom, by Teams, by you know, FaceTime, but it can't be replaced. If it if it could, you know, the telegraph would have put us out of business. Right? <laughs> there you have it. The print, the print, I mean, the people, right. have been, you know, the printing press would have put us out right. of business. Mm-hmm. And that clearly did not happen. As you have learned about and collaborated with RDU, is there anything that stands out or anything that surprises you about the airport? Um, well, that's a, that, gosh, that's a great question. Probably a um, lot of things over the years, because you, you've seen that constant growth and evolution of the airport. Yeah, I, th- I think that... Um, yeah, so one of the things uh, that is, is even to me as, as somebody who kind of pays attention to aviation is um, how complex and interrelated all these pieces mm-hmm. are. You know, it's easy to think of the airport as monolithic and it controls everything. But, you know, you've got, uh, and I've learned this acutely with, you know, through RTA and working with the, uh, with the airport team, you know, you you have got so many different stakeholders. You've mm-hmm. got your owners, right? The communities. You've got your neighbors. You've got airlines. You've got the federal government, and not just one part of the federal government. Right. You got the TSA. You got the FAA. You got the EPA. You've, you have employees. You have passengers. So it's a very complex enterprise, and not unlike a university. 
you know, you have your own fire department, you have your own police force, mm-hmm. you have your, you know, you it's have... A little city. Yeah, you're, you're, again, not unlike a university. You can't just necessarily wave your hand and say, okay, we're going to do this because you got to bring the airlines along and you got to bring the local governments along and, and all of that. So that complexity is uh, really surprising. I think also I've learned a lot more about the potential impact of the airport as an economic development engine mm-hmm. beyond just bringing people in and out mm-hmm, it right. is also eye-opening to me. $15 billion in a year and nearly 100,000 jobs. So it yeah. makes a broad impact. Yeah. Okay. Plus, you got the coolest fire trucks. And, you know, so. <laughs> we do. That's right. Very cool team Lots here at RDO. Lots of construction RDO. equipment. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, stand, standing on the runway and all that. That <laughs> is like, cool. I, I never get tired of that. Truly, I love watching planes land, take off, and just moving around. So I, so that's my, you know, one day I'll retire and I'll just be one of those people hanging out on the photo deck there. Or just <laughs> Observation <laughs> park. That's yeah. right. There'll be a plane spotter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. There you go. I mean, truly, I, you know, I almost always have a plane as my screensaver on my phone. We um, like it. Well, Mike, we greatly appreciate your time and joining oh, sure. us on the podcast. We wish you all the best in your future endeavors, and we greatly appreciate your support of RDU over the years. Well, thank you. Thank you both for making RDU a destination that we all want to come back to. Well, we hope to see you again here soon as you're flying back and forth, and you we'll set you up in the terminal, and you can watch planes as long as you want. That would be, <laughs> I, I would be in heaven. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> good, good. good. <laughs> We have just finished talking to Mike Schoenfeld, who I think is one of the most interesting people that I could talk to. I can listen to him all day. <laughs> Humble and smart yes, and, just and just true leader. And a range of experience that's just amazing. And, you know, when you think about Duke University, where he's worked for 14 years, they're a global organization. They have campuses all over the world. And, you know, the airport really connects them. And it was interesting to me to listen to him talk about that connectivity and how important it is to, to students, to faculty, to alumni who are far flung. Right. We talk about our economic impact, mm-hmm. but he gives it life. He That's just right. really is passionate about it. And I just found it so interesting the way that he made all those connections and just served as a champion in a time where we really needed that support from our community. I love that about him. I, and I wish him the very best. I'm glad that he joined us on the podcast. Like we said, we hope he stops by and says hello the next time he's flying through. Or right. we might see him at Observation Park. He says he loves right. to watch planes. Right. And all this says so much stuff because we're Carolina girls, but it, That's right. I'm getting on board his plane. Like I, I, I can do it and I'm a Carolina girl so best to him definitely we want to hear from you so be sure you submit your airmail questions to us at communications at rdu.com and you can also follow us on Instagram at fly rdu or on Twitter and Facebook at rdu airport Steph thanks for joining us on the podcast I had so much fun with you what a great contributor you were oh thank you it's been a lot of fun and I love to do it and happy to talk to you and love talking to Mike and hearing all those important rdu facts and figures awesome until the next time take care Thank you.